We're going to soft solder some silver on some bit cheeks today. There's two kinds of flux that I consistently use. That is this white paste flux here uh, called C flux. I like it a lot. It's not as messy as this right here, which is ruby fluid. Either one works. We will be using a little bit of both this time around. So I have a pair of Santa Barbara cheeks all ready to silver mount. The top surface here is not fine and smooth. It's actually been brushed over with a uh, non-woven abrasive belt. I have a piece of sterling silver cut to fit. So I cut it to fit around uh, where the mouthpiece is going to go. And in this case, it's going to be a concho mounted in the middle. I've got a hole cut out so everything goes together nice and clean. As you can see, <clears throat> I've warmed that up with my torch. We've got a uh, layer of the white flux on there now. I'm just going to warm it up until it's ready to take some solder. As you can see, <clears throat> I've got solder melted on there, but it's a little bit lumpy and, and uneven. So I'm going to take a standard flux brush. I'm going to warm this solder up. I'm going to spread it all over the back, what they call tinning the back of this piece of silver. So it's ready to solder down onto the steel cheek. This brush is wet. It's not dry. The idea here is to even out the layer of solder, not to have bumps and lumps and all that kind of crap on the back. I'm going to mount my cheek in this old vise I keep around just for soldering on. As you can see, <clears throat> I've got my cheek so that the face of the cheek is down. I've got my silver with the solder on it facing up, obviously. I'm using these Collins Company tool clips. Uh, absolutely love these things. They're so much better than using, um, well, like a cotter key and all that kind of stuff. Don't forget, cotter keys are designed to bend easily. They're not designed to hold their spring tension. So as soon as you put heat, the any tension you had in your cotter key is pretty much gone. Anyways, I'll put these clips around here, as many as I think I need, in order to get everything to hold it kind of up in place. I'm going to start putting a little heat <clears throat> onto this uh, cheek. I've got a pair of tweezers here to kind of help encourage solder to flow where I need it to flow.
All right, I feel like I got pretty good solder flow around everything. I'm going to take my flux brush again. I'm going to start sweeping around those edges just to make sure I've got solder flowed all the way around my edges. I'll start with a little bit damp brush. Don't be afraid to add solder if you feel like you got too little in there. I'll go around the other side now. Okay, so I got all my soldering done. All I have is a spray bottle, and it's filled uh, with just warm water and some dish soap. You notice I got a plastic bucket on the floor to catch all this stuff. I don't want this stuff laying all over the shop floor. It's uh, It really makes for a lot of rust and all that kind of crap on your tools. So when I'm done, I'll wash the... The floor <clears throat> and clean all this up. So I bought a pair of these Collins pliers for removing these hot clips. It helps quite a bit. I just throw them in a bucket of water. If I can hit the bucket. Come on, baby. Before you saw all that excess silver off the edges, now is a good time to check to see if you have a good solid um, solder joint all the way around to keep this silver from falling off the cheek. Yep, it's a hell of a mess on this side, but it actually comes off real quick. I'll go clean it up with some steel wool and soap, and it'll be ready to go on from there. A little bit of... Uh, Elbow grease and steel wool cleans them cheeks right up. There's not much cleanup at all. We're ready to saw around the outside and get them ready to carry on from there and get them ready to engrave. The only thing we have left to do now is take our jeweler saw and saw right around the outside edge of our cheek. I'll go around that now. 